Hey there, my name is Sasha and I'm a product manager here at SAS. In this video, we'll do a deep dive of working with SAS Visual Analytics reports in Excel. SAS for Microsoft 365 allows you to easily access and interact with SAS content like SAS Visual Analytics reports or SAS datasets and embed that content into your Excel worksheets. SAS for Microsoft 365 is available on both web and desktop versions of Excel, but for this video, I'm going to be working on desktop Excel. So with that, let's dive right in. Okay, so to open a report, you could click on the Reports button of the SAS ribbon, or if you already have the SAS pane open like I do, you can simply go to the Reports tab, and here you can start navigating through the available folder structure to find the report that you'd like to open. So my reports live in SAS content in public, and I'll open this Aquabank report first. You'll see that it loads to a new tab called Results, and the name of my report will be here in this dropdown, and the sections or pages of my report will be right underneath that. You can have multiple reports open at the same time and toggle between those reports using this dropdown. So if I go back to my Reports tab and then try to open another report, like this eCalico Business Performance Analysis report, you'll see that that will load here as well. And then if I open this dropdown, you can see that both of those are listed, so now I can work with um, either of those reports. So now that I have a few reports loaded to the results tab, I can start interacting with these reports in much the same way as if I were interacting with them in SAS Visual Analytics directly in a web browser. So I'm going to scroll through the first page of my report here called Business Monitor. And as I see something interesting, perhaps the purchase history chart here, I could maximize that to get a closer look. Um, maybe scroll through this table to get some detailed counts and then minimize that again. If my report objects had hierarchies, I could drill down from a high level of data to a more granular level. And then finally, I could see um, any filter interactions that, that occur between my report objects. So for example, this map that shows the customer distribution and satisfaction by state, if I click on a state like Texas, you'll see that the bar chart to the right of that um, is filtered to just include results from Texas. So I can get all of that information just by interacting with the report and with just a few clicks I can start embedding these visual insights into my Excel worksheets. So when inserting SAS content into your Excel worksheet you can either choose to insert the entire report into your document, insert just one page of the report, or just one individual report object. So to insert the entire report, you would click on this button here, and it will insert this report in your Excel document, where each page of the SAS report will be a new worksheet. To insert just one particular page, you could right-click on the page title, in this case, Business Monitor, and then select Insert Active Page and Document. And then finally, you could just choose to insert a specific visualization into your Excel worksheet. And to do that, you would click on it to make it active, click on this overflow menu, and select Insert in Document. So you might see some text above the visualization specifying the filter conditions of that visualization before the object in the worksheet. And this is a setting that's specified in your preferences dialog that we will talk about a little bit later. Finally, I might want to view detailed data about my purchase details. So I'm gonna 
select a new worksheet, and then go to the second page of my report, Purchase Details. And this gives me a list report of purchases by month and year, their product category and name, and then the amount paid. So I'm going to insert this into my worksheet. And the cool thing is that when you insert cross tabs or list tables, data is copied from Visual Analytics directly to the cells in Excel. And this allows you to leverage native Excel capabilities like conditional formatting. So I might want to look at amount paid and apply conditional formatting, maybe color scales to my amount paid column. So that's a quick overview of inserting content into your Excel worksheet. So after inserting some SAS content into your Excel worksheet, you might be wondering, how would I update this content with the latest data from SAS? And there are a few different ways to update your embedded report objects with the latest data from the SAS server depending on your preference. One way would be to work directly within the SAS pane to update a particular report object. So I just inserted my list table and applied some conditional uh, formatting onto the amount paid column. And you'll see that my table is sorted by purchase month and year. And maybe now I have realized that I want to sort it by product category instead. So I can make that sort order in my report in the SAS pane and then click on this overflow menu and select update in document. So you'll see a message updating document and you'll see this list table um, that's inserted into my Excel worksheet has now been updated with the new sort order that I've applied in my report in the SAS pane. So that's one way to update your embedded content in the SAS pane. And then another way would be to do it directly from the SAS ribbon. So with that, you would work with the selection objects here to either update all of the objects in your document or clicking on the selected object, you could just choose to update a particular object. So you just saw how easy it is to update your embedded SAS content with the latest data from SAS. But sometimes you might want to have a static image of a report object in your document. For example, Maybe you want to have a point in time view of your data at a specific time and not need to update it later at all. To do this, you could use the unlink from SAS feature. So let's go back to sheet one in my Excel document. And you'll remember that I had inserted this graph uh, displaying purchase history. So I'll make sure that that is active. And then in the selected object menu in my SAS ribbon, I can click unlink from SAS, and this will basically disconnect the object that's embedded in the worksheet with the object in the SAS pane, creating a static view of your data. So when you'd like to remove some embedded SAS content from your Excel worksheets, you could either choose to remove all of the object at once by clicking on this overflow menu and then selecting remove all objects from document, or you could choose to remove one object at a time. And to do so, you could either do that from the SAS pane by clicking on the overflow menu of a particular object and selecting remove from document, or doing it from the SAS ribbon by making sure that your embedded content is active, and then on the selected object menu, selecting remove from document. Finally, let's take a look at how you could customize SAS for Microsoft 365 and Excel using the Preferences dialog. So to launch the Preferences dialog, let's go back to Home, and in the Overflow menu, select Preferences. This will allow you to specify options such as when to apply SAS styles to the results, 
the graph size when inserting report content, or whether to display the filter when inserting report content. There are also Excel-specific options, such as allowing Excel to interpret value types in tables or preserving Excel formats during updates. And finally, you can also select SAS pane options such as the theme, where light is the default theme, but you have dark and high contrast to choose from. That was a quick overview of working with SAS for Microsoft 365. Next time, we'll take a look at working with SAS data in Excel. I hope this video has been useful to you. If you'd like, take a look at the links down below for other content that might help. And if you want more tips and tricks like these that I've shared with you, please subscribe to the SAS Users YouTube channel. See you next time.